Okay, what we have for you today here is the gaming test of the brand new ROG Phone 8 Pro Edition. And yes, this is the highest end version of the ROG Phone 8 series. And this is the phone and this is how it looks. There is the anime vision here that I have disabled for now, but I'll show you some of the B-rolls on the screen right now. And as mentioned earlier, we're just going to do some real quick gaming tests. And because this box is so big, I'll have to leave it somewhere. And fret not, we will have yet another video where we talk only about this Aeroactive Cooler X. Yes, it doesn't have the name Aeroactive Cooler 8. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, yeah, we'll talk more about this cooler in another video. But in this video, we will only talk about the gaming performance of the phone itself without any other accessory. So let's start off by just talking about the spec. So for the ROG Phone 8 Pro edition, is the same as the ROG Phone 8 Pro. Yeah, uh, the name is a bit confusing. So the ROG Phone 8 Pro means that the cooler is in the box, as in this thing. But if you buy the ROG Phone 8, that means you get this phone, but without the cooler in the box. So as we can see here, this phone has Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And this is the, of course, the latest and greatest flagship chipset. And for the screen resolution is 2400 by 1080, still at 165 hertz, just like its predecessor. And for this version in particular, it has 24 gigs of real RAM, no RAM extension or all of those bull crap. You can watch our video at the top right corner there to know more about RAM extension and why it is not as fast as real RAM and why it's actually not a good idea to actually use RAM extension. And for storage, we have one terabyte in this phone. So, uh, yeah, let's just start off with Genshin Impact first. And uh, the setting we're going to use is, of course, the highest available. So let it just rerun for a while. Uh, some audio for you guys. So we can see that uh, the game is at the absolute highest graphical setting, 60 FPS. And uh, I am also going to use this system info they do have a built-in system info as well so we can see the gpu and cpu utilization as well as the temperature i'm not sure what kind of temperature this is maybe it's the chipset maybe it's the battery i'm not sure then this is the fps value but before we start anything uh, i'm not going to talk about all of these features here because i will leave that for another video because i think they added a few more that i really like in terms of the features uh, i'm just gonna set the triggers real quick because the triggers are exactly the same as before they're still using the air triggers uh, i don't think they have any new features for the air triggers so as you can see here left and right we can still partition it to a few more different parts so dual partition means that we have a uh, left side on the first half and then the second half we can do that if you want to but uh, for me i don't use this because it's kind of how do I say this? You can't really tell if you're pressing the left left or the left right. I, I don't know how to say this, but the, the first half and the second half of the left side. So I usually just use it in tap mode. And for this time, I will use this for attack. This one is for skill, which is this one. So there we go. And let's just play the game. So I'm pretty sure a lot of people are realizing that there's a lot of scan line going on here. That is because the refresh rate of the screen is not really working well with our camera's uh, shutter speed. So let me just do that real quick. So let's just proceed. Uh, I don't know what to do actually because I've cleared up most of the content, I would say. Uh, you know what, we just go and defeat some bosses maybe? So in our most recent video regarding this game, I did say that this character here, the, the Yoimiya, is very comfortable to be played on mobile. And I'll show you why, because for this character, you literally just tap attack. The auto attack will handle everything. It's just that getting the setup for her to whip out the most damage is going to be a bit more challenging on mobile. Actually, not that challenging. It's pretty easy for my particular team here. Uh, but I don't have a shielder, so she'll get wrecked really easily because this is a glass cannon build. So let's just 
kill this boss real quick even before the gimmick of the anti-gravity thing starts the, the boss should be dead so do that real quick this 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 aha uh -huh. look at that damage then oh i should use this see that's why this character is real good for mobile players and once the setup is complete her damage is really high so uh, let's let's just walk around the streets so overall i'm really pleased with the frame rate so as we can see here it's very consistent why did i do that i shouldn't talk and play game at the same time but uh yeah the frame rate is always at 61 or 60 now it never dips below 60 as far as i know that's impressive oh god i need to readjust my grip And yeah, this is this is fantastic. I mean, the frame rate is always 60, 61. Actually, 61, I think they just rounded up the number. But uh, yeah, it, it shouldn't be 61. And uh, as we can see here, the CPU and GPU utilization is always, always below 100%. Actually, below 80%. Even the GPU right now is only at 74, which is amazing oh glass cannon so yeah the frame rate the gpu cpu utilization is amazing i've never seen anything so stable in Genshin Impact with the highest graphical setting. Now, I don't know what's the render resolution of this game on this phone particular. Uh, yeah, I presume it's quite high because I don't see any weird low resolution artifacts. Should I even call it artifacts or even just weird like a weird pixelation or whatever. Yeah, it, the game looks good, real good. Yeah, I shouldn't do that. The crab has fire element and I'm nearly dead. You know what's a good challenge? We should try to defeat some of those uh, super high level overworld bosses that is in this new Fontaine area. That should be fun, right? Especially on mobile. I don't know how they'll go, especially with this um, um, glass cannon build. So let's just take these out real quick. Oh, one hit. I mean, this character is super powerful, so yeah. Uh, let's just go for that boss. It looks so normal, like it's just chilling, but yeah, this, this boss is one of the toughest. Oh no, I don't think I can take him out that easily because this was his real heart. Yeah, I don't wanna die. thought I'm holding that button already. God. Damn. What am I standing on? Oh 
Oh god. Nope, I died. Uh, yeah, I think I need to set the aeroactive trigger to be not so stiff. I, I shouldn't say stiff. I need to set it to be a bit more sensitive. Yeah, that's, that's the correct word for it. And then that should make the experience a lot better. And to do that, it's actually quite easy too. Um, A triggers. Can I set it here? Yes, I can. Just head into settings. Then from here, we can enter here. We can set the level. Sensitivity booster. Apply. And that should be a lot more softer. Yes, it is. Okay, let's go for a rematch with this team instead. I think this team would last longer, hopefully. <laughs> But I'm not sure how that will that will go. Oh no. Yeah, this, this should do it. Hopefully, I don't die. Oh, I saw one frame skip. That seems to be a game issue more than anything. <gasps> Why he kill? That that's bad. Okay, never mind. I can't I can't do this on mobile. Anyway, as we can see here, the frame never drops. It's always at 60, 61 FPS. And yeah, the GPU utilization, the highest that I've seen is at about 75%. And as for CPU, it's at it's it's always below 50% which I find it to be really amazing coming from the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 because we can finally say that this game in particular I mean we can finally reach consistent 60 FPS on this game on Android phones and we don't have any hiccups or stutters at all it's consistent at 60 so far no thermal throttling even though the phone is it does feel very very warm right now so I just rip out my thermal camera here okay so we can see on the right side here it's at around 39.5 degrees celsius not exactly that high around the middle is where the chipset is located and that is gonna be around 41 something degrees celsius i saw 42 degrees celsius just now which isn't the highest but it's uh, a little bit on the higher side nothing to worry about because phones can reach around 50 something degrees celsius it'll still be fine and on the left side it's at around 35 degrees celsius so that's the front now let's move to the back this is gonna be a bit difficult i'm constantly touching stuff so at the back here we can see uh the camera bump around here is around 30 40 degrees celsius wow that instantly changes so as we move down further to the middle part we can see the temperature is around 40 degrees celsius nearly 41 degrees celsius not too high i would say the screen size is only 42 degrees celsius and remember that so i'd say the heat distribution is really equal between the front and the back and at the rear here it's around 35 degrees celsius again the phone does feel warm but overall it's still at a very safe temperature so you don't have to worry about it you can just play the game at the highest graphical settings again no frame drops below 60 fps no bottlenecks no nothing highest graphical setting i mean you can verify it once more um there we go highest graphical setting everything is at high highest possible 
even this is the highest 60 fps usually i'll disable motion blur but for this test i'm using the highest preset anyway so i don't want to touch that so yeah everything is at the absolute highest and finally we can play this game at 60 fps zero frame drops no overheating real good performance out of the Snapdragon 8 gen 3 yeah and now let's move on to the next game okay so now let's try with pubg mobile and uh, like what i always mention pubg mobile is really horrible in terms of optimization and because the snapdragon 8 gen 3 is still such a new chipset as we can see here hdr graphics with extreme frame rate is all that we can get and these are all of the settings that we have it's disappointing so let's just enter a real game real quick and let's just you know go on with it i don't want to spend a second longer with this game so yes we can see the cpu and gpu utilization is extremely low and yeah the fps it keeps on dipping because this game is just horrible in terms of optimization we can see texture pop-ins here and there and that is what's affecting the fps number they should have just streamlined all the loading process so the transition is smoother and also you don't have weird frame dips like what we had. Ah, just PUBG mobile things I guess, it's just not optimized at all. Ow, ow, ow. That was fast. <laughs> okay, I think we have enough of PUBG Mobile. The game is very unoptimized. You want to know why PUBG New State is better? Just look at this settings menu, graphics. We have 90 FPS, of course. Why not? Ultra settings. High, high. It will download some stuff. I will let it download. And these are all of the settings that I'm using. You can choose between OpenGL and also Vulkan. Uh, this is a bit more... How do I say this? It defaults to Vulkan, but in certain phones, as far as I can tell, I did experience one phone that in Vulkan, this game wouldn't run above 60fps. So maybe that's the case with this phone as well. Uh, we'll test that out after this thing has been downloaded. So I'll leave it in Vulkan for now. Okay, now that download is finished and we have selected all of these graphical settings. Again, we'll keep an eye out on this and also the FPS when we're in the game. So let's just start real quick. Huh, I just realized I didn't even turn on X mode while we were doing all of the gaming tests. So yeah, I think they fixed the bug. As we can see here, we're getting 89, 90, 91 FPS from Vulkan uh, API, which is a very good sign. So let's just proceed with the game and see how well it managed to sustain this frame rate honestly speaking if it can handle Genshin Impact then all of these games will not be an issue at all but I still want to test it out because you know for the sake of completion uh, I do have the RG Phone 8 non-pro version so do keep an eye out on that gaming test video as well
there's no one here. What? Oh, I'm getting shot. Where are they at? Bye. I'm still not used to this this A trigger thing because I personally still prefer those kind of uh, magnetic pop-up triggers. I think they feel a lot better. As you can see, I always misposition my right trigger here because my hand keeps on moving to get more support. And also, this angle to film this type of gaming test video is just not not that ideal for the player because I prioritize the camera what the camera is seeing more than what I'm seeing and I'm actually looking the game through an external monitor so yeah I always just don't find myself pressing the right trigger that accurately because of how I'm actually looking at the game and how I'm holding the phone Having physical pop-up triggers mean that I can always just, you know, feel it with my fingertips where the button is and always press on that button and I know it is pressed because I get a click out of it. Uh, these kind of air triggers, yeah, I just get a vibration and I'm not sure where the vibration is coming from. Maybe it's the game that's vibrating my hands. I don't know. So yeah, I, I honestly still prefer those kind of Magnetic pop-up triggers like ROG, not ROG phone, the, the one again, the Black Shark, but RIP Black Shark, I don't know what they're doing right now. Maybe the company is still alive, I don't know. And yeah, PUBG New State, not gonna be an issue for this phone as expected. So I think we should move on to the next game. Now, COD Mobile, they got a pretty huge upgrade recently so there's a brand new option called super resolution that runs the game at a very high render resolution which i will show you later in the graphics menu okay so the one thing i need to show you is this graphics so you see we got max here but unfortunately we can't use it because as you can see here it says not available yet but uh, we do have ultra frame rate so if we tap on this question mark here uh, it says multiplayer is gonna get 120 fps so I will use this and then I am also using all of these settings what is that music it's horrendous so super resolution turn on if we tap on this question mark here it will say increasing the resolution graphic may increase power draw blah 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 all of those stuff this phone is gonna handle it no problems at all Variable rate shading, I turn it off because it is actually to vary the graphical quality of certain parts of the game to increase FPS but that's not going to be an issue for this phone, right? Optical performance, so this is to get a realistic scope with special effects and whatnot, so let's enable that and let's head into a game. God damn, this music is horrible. So let's just configure the air triggers real quick. Uh, again, this is going to be scope. This is gonna be fire. Uh, where's fire? This is scope, right? Bro, I need my scope button. Okay, there we go. Scope, shoot is this. Eh, hey, shoot button is not working. This is why I like physical triggers a lot more because I know that I pressed it. Yeah, I need to readjust my grip. You know, the only thing I can feel is that the ROG logo that is actually imprinted on the phone itself. So yeah i think i still do pretty well in here right hey 
Hey. That was fast. Yeah, we even forgot to just look at the frame rate because as we can see here, this phone can handle this game highest settings available at least for this kind of frame rate. I mean, COD Mobile could have just enabled all of the options for us and I think this game will still run fine at 120 FPS. As we can see here, the entire gameplay was real smooth. Even my victory is smooth. So yeah, let's just head into the next game, which is Mobile Legends. Okay, so I gotta mention a few things to you here. So number one, ROG is an official partner for Mobile Legends. So this phone in particular, the ROG Phone 8 Pro, and Pro Edition, I think, has Mobile Legends pre-installed already. And I think this is a special version of the game because we have this super frame rate option here and also ultra graphic settings. For the ROG Phone 8, this base version here, which you can watch the gaming test at the top right corner there, this phone for Mobile Legends does not have the super frame rate as far as I know. So we will just proceed with all of these options for now. And uh, yeah, let's just hop into a game. Okay, so super frame rate means that we're getting 90 FPS. Uh, okay, I expected more, but uh, I, I, I'll take it. Oh god. You wanna tango, boy? You serious, boy? I know who I am, and you You know what, just as expected, there's not going to be an issue with this game on Mobile Legends. I mean, as you can see here, it runs really, really smoothly. I should go back as well. You want a tango, boy? I mean, yeah, as we can see here, Mobile Legends literally not gonna be an issue. Like what we mentioned, if you can run Genshin, then other games that we tried, it's not gonna be an issue, except for some other games that I want to try. First up, Fortnite. Yeah, I make this an exception because uh, this kind of flagship devices, if it can run Genshin, then Fortnite shouldn't be an issue, right? So let's try it out. Okay. So I'm really unfamiliar with Fortnite in general. I'm not sure what all of these are. I think they're different modes. 
So let's just go into this for a while. As we can see here, we have selected it at 90 FPS and everything is at this setting. High quality preset. Okay, that, that's a problem. Okay, I'll just show you right here. So 90 FPS, right? If I set it to quality preset, epic, then it drops to 60 FPS. But I want higher frame rates because this is a shooter game after all. So yeah, it will use high quality preset. I'll, I'll just use this. So let's proceed with this and we'll go for it's downloading HD textures. I'll wait for that. And also turn on X mode while we are here. Ha, huh, so that's downloaded. Now I think we should just hit Battle Royale, right? And uh, I'm just gonna hop into a game real quick and see how things go. Okay, let's go. Uh, frame rate is at 60. I think it will increase when I jump down, right? Hmm, FPS is still at 60. Maybe when I land? How do I land quicker? Hmm, settings is weird. It is definitely at 90. But for whatever reason, it says I'm at 60 now. That is definitely a bug because we are now getting 90. Not gonna be an issue at all for this phone at all. Same graphical settings, so let me just show you once more. Uh, settings, yeah, 90. High and everything is as such. And yes, we are getting 90. So yeah, that was a bug, definitely. But there is one more game that I want to try. I swear this is the last one. So as you can see, I did install Car X Street, War Thunder, Arena Breakup. Out of all these three games that actually some websites say that they have ray tracing, only War Thunder is available in the version that we download from Google Play Store. So I'm just gonna use this. So this game in particular, eh, I'm not familiar with this game at all, but uh, ROG did show us that this game did have ray tracing even a year ago. It was in beta and now it is released for the public to try. So let's just use it and try. Okay, so for this game, we have this sort of settings. It's quite mysterious, but uh, maximum graphical quality. I don't know what's the exact setting that it does, but okay. FPS limit uh, 120 and then there is also ray tracing option. I just set it to high. But uh, for this game in particular, I don't think the ray tracing makes that much of a difference. It's just some reflection and especially shadows that's the most obvious. I should take a few screenshots for you guys to see a comparison, right? So let me just do that real quick. And this is the comparison between all of the three. Technically, there are two modes for this game. So the first one is tank. Uh, I would expect the shadows of the tank and also all of the shiny reflective metal on the tank itself to be reflective. And this is where ray tracing will, uh, pun intended, shine the most. And the second one that it will shine the most is with this ship mode. So the water, uh, I'm not sure if they implemented ray tracing for the water because uh, I can see some repeating water wave texture there, so maybe not. But either way, I should play tank mode because of all this shiny metal body thing. X mode. Oh, we are not in X mode. You know what? Okay, let, let's try again. We'll try with X mode now. Yeah, let, let's do, do a real quick test. If we can get better FPS with X mode enabled, then okay, at least we know.
Oh, captured a point. But driving a tank through all of these tight spots is it even a good idea though. Ouch. I think we did get some better FPS, 60 something right now. Let's move to this more open area and the phone is really really heating up. I mean it's hotter than what we have experienced in Genshin Impact I think. I mean this temperature here, again I'm not sure what's the temperature rating for. Maybe it's for the SOC, maybe it's for the battery. I don't know, but it's 44 right now. What should I do? Do I just sit here or what? Okay, never mind. I'll just sit here then. Um, you know what? We'll try the graphical settings. So as we can see here, we're sitting around 70 something even before I turn on this option thing. And if we turn on... Whoop, there's someone there. And I think I accidentally used the smoke grenade. But yeah, anyway, let's wait for the smoke to dissipate. Oh, I saw someone. Oh, that's a snipe. Don't go yet. Ah, god damn. Eh? So anyway, back to this, uh, if we don't use ray tracing, we can get 120 FPS, which is okay. So if we do enable, then what is happening? Why am I in a plane suddenly? Uh, yeah, I mean, as what we said just now, if we enable ray tracing, we cannot get 120 FPS, but if we disable it, we can, but we do have to enable X mode and the phone is really, really heating up. As you can see, 47 degrees Celsius. Uh, yeah, that, that's gonna be toasty. You know what, Let, let's whip out the thermal camera real quick before we end this. So, I can feel my hand getting toasted when I touch the middle back part of the phone. So let me focus this. And... As we can see, the bottom part, front part is around 40 degrees Celsius, which is higher than before. Around the middle, 43.3 degrees Celsius is what I see just now, which is definitely higher than what we got in Genshin. So yeah, this is going to be our new standard when it comes to game tests and torture tests. Then what about the back of the phone? The back, camera part, cool, no problem there. Then once we move on to the middle part, it's at around 41, 42 degrees Celsius. 
and we can really see that pattern there right that middle white part there is where the SOC is located and that's where the hottest is going to be then at the bottom part here 36.5 somewhere around there it's constantly changing and dropping but what I'm concerned about is the front middle part as we can see if the temperature is that high yeah it, it, it's gonna start toasting your fingertips a little bit remember we are only testing the skin temperature not the exact chipset temperature so the skin temperature is what we feel with our fingers when we touch the device and finally that's all that we have to share with you in this gaming test video of the ROG Phone 8 Pro Edition yes that is the official name of this uh, it is technically the ROG Phone 8 Pro just with the cooler included in the box as well the review for this cooler will come later I will leave all of the links at the top right corner here or down in the description below there's gonna be a playlist because we do have the ROG Phone 8 the base version without the Pro and I just want to show you guys the performance is gonna be exact same and a lot of people do not believe me when I say that for the previous generations so for this generation I managed to get both of them the Pro and the non Pro thanks Asus Malaysia for that and I just want to show you that they are exactly the same but there are some other differences for this generation so we will also have a comparison video between these two not in terms of gaming but in terms of everything else so do subscribe for that and we're gonna have a playlist of videos for the ROG Phone 8 series so do subscribe hit that like button and we'll see you guys in those videos thank you so much for sticking around for this video because it's the recording itself is 1 hour and 40 minutes I will cut this down to at least 40 minutes I hope so yeah we see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Really thanks for watching. And please do subscribe. That helps us out a lot. So goodbye.